thing that I'm going to talk about here, and I hope that I'm going to have uh, a scenario for this built by the time that I release a new version of the of the dev kit. Uh, let's see, file new. Uh, I was gonna. I told you I was going to talk about doing system in the loop testing. So I'm going to grab a couple of routers and drop them down. Uh, so we haven't talked about sort of all of the capabilities of core. Uh, you can look that up uh, generally from the web. Uh, but I got. I can add these links uh, between nodes. So here's a couple of links for for those. We haven't talked a lot about uh, what the the connectivity mechanisms are. So there there are Ethernet hubs. There are Ethernet switches. This is the, the wireless LAN configuration. Uh, so if you want to model something where you've got you know, an Ethernet switch that's in between a couple of nodes, I could take a switch and drop it down there and put a bunch of other nodes hanging off of that switch. So I can make things look like that. And, and this, will act, uh, this, this, this will be a bridge in Linux. Um, and, and so it'll act like, a, uh, like an Ethernet switch. Uh, one other bit that, you, and, and, and all of this, let's see, if, if these guys are all turned on, uh, they're all set up using the defaults, so they'll all do routing and, and, and route amongst themselves. So this is all fine. Um, and again, you'll notice that, like, for instance, here on each one of these links that are sort of point-to-point -point links, I've got 10.001, 10.002, 10.011, 10.012. Out here, I've got 10.02. Uh, 1021, 1022, 1023, 1024. So all of these nodes are on the same subnet, right? As they should be if they're all connected by a switch. Um, another kind of node that you can have is this RJ45 physical interface tool. If you click on that and drop one of these out here, uh, it'll claim unassigned. I might connect to that from some node in my network. Uh, and what this does is it will bridge between the, the virtual environment of nodes that's running inside core and a, a physical ethernet interface on the host. Uh, now, to make this work the way you really want it to work, you have to, to be a little bit careful because if you install the dev kit as a virtual machine running under VirtualBox, the host, as far as core is concerned, is the VirtualBox virtual machine, this, the one that's giving you this desktop back here, that's running Linux. If you want to get out of that VirtualBox virtual machine and out to the real world, then you've got to go into VirtualBox's configuration uh, and stitch something up between there and the real world. If you run core on bare metal uh, on, a, on a Linux box, then uh, patching one of these RG45 tools out to the host is will, will essentially get it out to an, in, uh, an Ethernet interface on that box. The, the, the configuration bit here, if you right click on it and say configure, it'll give you a list of interfaces and it says right now it says unassigned uh, and this is asking you to which physical interface do you want to bridge this interface going out. Uh, so uh, it's going to be really tough for me from inside a corporate environment with, uh, 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 with uh, 802.1x to make this work all the way out. But I'm going to assert for the moment that I'm going to bridge it to ENP0S3, uh, which I happen to know is the wireless interface, uh, which is the, the outbound interface on... Uh, Actually, what is the NP zero? Well, maybe, maybe I'm not right. Uh, if config, if I do an if config on the host, here's the NP zero S three. So this is on the Linux host, and it's got an address of ten o two fifteen that was given to it by VirtualBox. So from here, I can ping www.google.com. Uh, uh, yeah, sure, why not? Oh, let's see about that. Semantic. There. Okay. Uh, I also recently updated this Mac to Catalina, so I get tens of thousands of little security warnings like that. It's very lovely. Um, but anyway, so here's the host able to ping out uh, to Google, and I can assert. Uh, I, I think that if I bridge, if I do in fact bridge this to 
the host interface, I think the host interface is going to lose its IP address and lose its connectivity to outside uh, because it will it'll be bridged through to here. But I'll go ahead and try it. Or it won't let me, one of the two. I am well and truly stuck at this point. I'm going to strike that over. Don't know quite what his problem was. Again, uh, this may be a, a feature. Do that. Configure. Let's tell it that and apply. Okay. Um, so now it's going to assert that it's bound to ENP0S3. And the way to the, the way that you would use this in practice, in the simplest case where you're running uh, a, a Linux box, uh, where you're not running uh, the the dev kit inside its own virtual machine, but running on bare metal, uh, is that you would do this. You would pick a, an interface on the Linux box uh, and and bridge this to it, and then. Uh, a node that you plug in, and then you plug in a switch, you know, beyond uh, beyond that, and uh, the node that you plugged in, uh, things that you plugged into that switch, as long as they're on this network, this 10.0.2.1/24 network, uh, they would be able to communicate directly with node three. So if you if you if from out of here, if this is the a physical port on the machine, you connect that into a sort of a, a physical switch outside and you plug a Raspberry Pi or a 1RU box or, or some flight representative hardware into that switch. Uh, if, if, that, uh, uh, if that node is configured with a, an IP address that's on this 10.0.2.1 network, it should be able to ping directly into node N3. Uh, again, if I do this, I suspect Uh, so all these all these VETH interfaces are the virtual interfaces of these various nodes, uh, but I still do have an ENP zero S three. So maybe maybe that would uh, yeah maybe that would work. Any in any case, I'm gonna try to get some more documentation and uh, and an example. Which will pretty much look like this, probably, uh, but but with the uh, uh, with a bunch of nodes that are configured to run Ion uh, set up in it, so that the the point being that if you wanted to run uh, some some particular unit under test, like a real version of Ion or some flight representative hardware out here, uh, and then run it through uh, sort of a larger network, you don't have to build out that larger network in uh, you know, sort of separate VMs or, uh, or or separate machines, you can do that through core. And and part of what that gives you is, again, if you're in here, and if I right-click, if I go to sort of the middle of one of these links, and I right-click on it and say configure, uh, I can restrict the bandwidth to be 20 kilobits a second. I can set the delay to be 300 milliseconds. Uh, and I can set the loss rate to be 4.2%. And I can set duplications. Uh, so now I can configure all these links and, and do sort of you know cheap, cheap WAN emulation uh, of, of what this path might look like and, and run my test hardware talking from the, the actual hardware to, uh, to a node that's in the simulation uh, in, or in the emulation. Uh, you can even do this twice if you want. Uh, I can't do it on this machine. Well, I, I guess I almost can because I can assert that loopback is going to be my other interface. Um, but you can go uh, configure. I really don't. I suspect it would not let me uh, assign that to the same interface. Probably better not. But I could do this. And, and so if I have multiple Ethernet interfaces on the machine that I can use to get out, uh, like if you've got a USB Ethernet adapter, for instance, uh, then I could put real hardware on one side, real hardware on the other side, a bunch of these nodes in the middle, 
that are running ION uh, that have different characteristics on these links, uh, and then run uh, you know, from real hardware through the emulation out real hardware on the other side. So if you wanted to do things like test uh, PI instruments across a set of things that were running in here and coming out, uh, you could do that. And, and if you were uh, sufficiently persistent about it and wanted to install, say, other versions of, of BP, uh, like a DTN2 version of BP, or, or look at what it's like when we move to uh, BP version 7. Uh, you could replace all these with BP version 7. You could replace some of them with uh, DTN2 and run ION version uh, uh, ION version 3, which is BP version 6, uh, in, a, in a mixed network uh, and, and look at uh, uh, interoperability issues uh, and then performance issues going all the way end to end. Uh, through the emula uh, through the emulation.